Hey everyone! Today I wanted to do a video on the basics of sewing and how to use a sewing machine if you have one and you don't know how to use it. Mine is a Kenmore 385 and a lot of sewing machines have the same basic parts, but if yours is a lot more advanced or looks a lot different than mine, you might need to look up additional tutorials on how yours specifically works. So first going over the different parts of the sewing machine, we first have the foot pedal. So this you'll place on the ground and use your foot to press down. And when your foot presses down, that will move the machine and start sewing. Next we have the hand wheel and when you rotate it, the needle will move up and down. So this manually moves the needle. Up here is where you'd place your spool of thread and mine also comes with a handle. And this is used only when you need to refill your bobbin. Right here is your needle and this is your presser foot. And back here there is a lever that when you pull this down, the presser foot will lower. So it's really important to always lower your presser foot when you're sewing. And that way it is locked in place and these things down here will move your fabric this way as you're sewing. Now taking a look inside, this piece in the front can come off and that's just if you need a narrower surface or a wider surface. So this is removable and it usually will have some extra sewing supplies and feet and your bobbins, a place for your bobbins. So I'm just going to set this aside for now. And in here is where your bobbin will go and that's going to be the thread underneath. So there's one coming from the top and there's one coming from inside the machine. So I'll show how to load the bobbin in later, but there's just this holder here that fits into the machine. And the last thing is this lever right here, which is used if you wanna go backwards. So usually the fabric will be feeding through this way, but when you hold this down, it will now go the other way. So you can stitch backwards. Now for the stitches, here's where you can control what kind of stitch you're doing. So if you just turn this wheel, it will move on to the next stitch. So I usually stay with the straight stitch or the zigzag stitch. And so I just stay between here, but I sometimes use the buttonhole stitch, which is over here. And for my sewing machine, it's color coordinated where the stitch length should be. So if you're doing any of these stitches in red, it can be at anywhere from zero to four. But if you're doing like this green stitch, you would have it at zero to two. And if you're doing buttonhole, you just have it right in this zero to one area. So that's pretty helpful. Now adjusting this changes the length of the stitch. So if you have it at number four, that's gonna be the longest stitch. So here's a little sample I made. This, as you can see, is the longest stitch. And here it goes down to three, two, one, and zero is even tinier than that. So I usually use three to four for mine, but you can use smaller since they are stuffed animal clothes and you might want some neater stitches. And width does not affect the straight stitch at all. So only if you're using the other stitches will the width be important, but I usually just use zigzag stitch. So I wanted to show the different kinds with the different numbers you use. So the width determines basically how far the zigzag is going. So as you can see, when it's four, it's pretty wide like this, and then it's getting smaller and skinnier and skinnier. And so here's four and five. So the stitch is pretty long. And as I'm lowering the width, it's getting skinnier and skinnier. And so when it's two, the stitch is shorter and it's still pretty wide. And so you can just see here all the different ones. And if you're unsure what width you need or what length you need, you can always test it out on a piece of paper just to see how it's gonna look so you know what size is right for whatever you need to do. If you haven't used a sewing machine before, it's always a great idea to practice using your pedal and practice sewing a straight line. So I just drew a line on a scrap piece of paper and now I'm just going to turn on my machine and keep in mind there is still no thread throughout the machine so it's just going to be poking through the paper and the thread isn't really necessary if you just want to practice sewing straight and using the pedal. So I'm just placing my paper under the needle 
and slowly lowering the foot with that lever in the back, and that will hold the paper in place. Now with my foot on the pedal, I'm slowly going to apply pressure to it, and you'll see the needle starting to move up and down, and the paper will be moving away from you. I always like to have one hand holding the other end of the paper or cloth, and that way I can slowly guide it and pull it through the machine. And that just gives you more control over the stitch. And as you saw, mine was going pretty slow, so I was just lightly pressing my pedal to make sure I was going in a straight line. But you'll see just messing around with it that the more pressure you apply to the pedal, the faster the needle will move. It's good to practice a lot with the pedal so you're used to applying the right amount of steady pressure. So after sewing along that first line, I think I did pretty good with the straight stitch. Now I'm going to practice using the zigzag stitch. So I'm just going to rotate that stitch wheel until it's at the zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to do the same thing as last time, just lightly applying pressure to the pedal, and then the needle will start moving side to side to make the zigzag stitch. I only did a little bit of this one, but when I'm done, I'm just going to lift the foot back up, and if your needle is still puncturing through, just rotate that hand wheel, and this is what the zigzag stitch looks like without the thread. Now I'm going to show you how to load your thread into the machine. So I'm first going to pull up this spool holder and put my thread here. And now I just have my piece of thread and I'm going to first wrap it around this little hook thing and then have it go straight down and around and up. So now it's right here and I'm going to open this front box and right here there's actually a bulb which when your machine is on this will turn on and that just makes it easier to see. Mine isn't on right now. Now I'm going to bring it around the back and into this hook. And now I'm going to put it through this lower hook. Now the last thing I do is put the thread through this hook on the side. I do the left side. And then you'll want to pull down this white piece and pull it towards you. And that inserts a teeny tiny hook inside the eye of the needle. So when you wrap the thread around and go in like this, it goes through the hook and pulls it through the eye of the needle, and now your thread is through. I know this seems super complicated, and it definitely took me a while to be able to do this on my own, but you can just keep watching this video every time you need to do this until you memorize it, and sometimes your sewing machine will have these little numbers to guide you where to go with the thread. And I forgot to mention this wheel right here determines the tension of your thread. So I just keep it between four and five and it should be good. Now the last thing to do before getting started is to load our bobbin. And this is the bobbin. It looks like a little spool and it holds the thread. And you'll want to have a matching thread as the top one. And I'm first going to open this bottom panel and pull this out. I didn't really have it in very well. But here's your little holder. And I'll just place this inside and have the thread pulled out just a little bit. And now there's a teeny tiny little notch right here. And that's where I'm going to pull my thread through into this larger opening. And once you have that, I'm gonna pull it a little more. And this little thing in the front, when you hold onto this, it makes sure the bobbin doesn't fall out. So it's not coming out, but when you let go, it will fall out. So. I'm going to lift this up as I put it right in, matching up the holes. And once I have that, I'm going to just rotate it until this little lever fits in there. So after that, we just need to get this through the opening here so they're together. Now to do that, you'll first want to hold this top thread, and then you're going to want to rotate that hand wheel that I showed earlier until the needle goes down and up. And it might be kind of hard to see with the black thread, but once you see that top thread going around the bobbin case, you're going to want to pull that top thread, and that will pull in the bottom thread. So I'm just going to pull that through this opening, and both should be kind of inside that opening of the foot, and now you are ready to sew. Before you get started, you want to make sure that both the threads hanging out are about four or five inches at least, because when you turn on the machine, the thread will kind of get pulled in, and you don't want it to get pulled out of the needle, because then you'll have to re-thread it. So now I'm going to insert my fabric here, turn on my machine, and that'll turn on the light. 
and then just lower the foot with the lever in the back. And now you can get started. After a few stitches, I'm going to press down on this and that will have it go the other way, as you can see. And now I'm just gonna go forward again. This is what's called locking your stitch. And we do this so the thread is locked in place and so the stitches don't easily unravel. Once I get to the end of my fabric, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the beginning and just do a backward stitch and then come forward again to lock the other end. Lastly, I'm gonna lift up the foot, pull this out, and I actually have a little thing right here with a little blade inside, so I could just kind of push it through here and that'll cut it. Or you could just use scissors to cut it close here, but make sure to leave this pretty long for when you sew next. And then you're done. I know this isn't everything you need to know about sewing, but I just wanted to make this beginner's video. For those of you who watch my videos, have a sewing machine, and just don't know where to start. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of how to work a sewing machine and how to do some basic sewing. If you guys found this helpful, please let me know in the comments, and I might even make more videos like this that go into further detail, like how to refill the thread of a bobbin or just some basic hand stitching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time.